Hey everybody, DishNet34 here, Rob Tomlinson, welcoming you to today's episode of This Week in Perfect Team, episode number 205. Welcome in to the first day of June. Oh man, it's a good month. It is a good month. It is summertime here in a lot here in the United States. It's a fun time. Weather's getting warmer. It's like, gosh, it's like 83 degrees out right now. It is absolutely insane how hot it is right now. Oh my goodness. And you know what sucks? I'm just going to go a little personal here for a little bit. I need to get my car to the shop and I need to get its AC fixed because it is not looking, it, 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 it's blowing hot air when it's supposed to be blowing cold. So, um, I've had to have the windows down, which honestly, not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. But you know what? With the nice weather comes some nice card releases that we have here on This Week in Perfect Team. And my goodness, we have a fun one for y'all today because we are celebrating the life and career of one Lou Gehrig, the legendary Yankees first baseman. Um, Lou Gehrig Day is tomorrow, I believe, June 2nd. That's going to be, that's fantastic here. And we have some fun cards based on his life, based on his career. It is going to be some fantastic stuff coming today. Plus, we're also going to discuss a little bit about the next Perfect Team Championship Series coming up soon here today. And that's actually coming up next week. But there's a few news and notes that we need to get to, so let's go ahead and get right to it and we're going to start with a couple of pieces of news from perfect team live here today and we will start off today's news and notes with the live the pt live monthly rewards that's right starting today we will be commencing monthly leaderboards for perfect team live and the best perfect team live players during every single month for the rest of the regular season We'll be getting some really sweet pack rewards. First place, we'll be getting first place in the monthly leaderboards. We'll be getting 125 standard packs right there. That is a lot of packs right there, folks. Second place, we'll get 80 standard packs. Third and fourth, we'll get 60 standard packs. Fifth through 10th place, we'll get 35 standard packs. 11th through 100th. We'll get 10 standard packs in 101st place through 200th place. We'll get five standard packs. So that's that's some pretty good stuff right there. Some very solid monthly rewards for Perfect Team Live. Now, you might be saying, you know, there's there's all this good stuff going on with PT Live, but it's only on the PC version of the game right now. Well, folks, I am proud to announce PT Live is coming to Out of the Park Go. Either it's going to be later today or sometime tomorrow, but it is coming up this week. That's right. There will be a patch that will be deployed that will enable Perfect Team Live for Out of the Park Go. And please stay tuned for an announcement on when it's going to be officially released. We are hoping to have that ready today or tomorrow. So pretty cool stuff right there. PT Live coming to Out of the Park Go. I know y'all have been clamoring for it since PT Live was announced. We finally have some dates. Fun stuff right there. All right, folks, now we've been teasing kind of a surprise these last couple of days for for Perfect Team 24. And I feel like this is going to be a pretty interesting surprise right here because starting today with this content set, starting today with this content set, we are going to be introducing a special new type of pack ladies and gentlemen we bring to you spotlight packs now spotlight packs these are a whole new way 
to pull cards and each spotlight pack basically is set up where one card in the pack is guaranteed to be from a selection of recent content cards. The fixed card in each pack is guaranteed to be at least a silver card and will be from the last few packable content sets that we have. The other five cards in each pack will be drawn from any non-live players using the standard ratio of card tiers and odds. Now, these packs are only going to be sold for the first few days after content releases, and the pool of cards will vary. The fall will be from the last four packable content sets, but some may be set up a little bit differently. So the first spotlight pack that is going to be coming out today will include, will have cards from Future Legends 1, Speed Demons, Tops 2, and the Garrig Collection as the guaranteed card. Now, there will be an indicator to differentiate what kind of spotlight pack you have because we're going to be, you know, releasing different ones based on the different content sets. So pretty cool stuff right here. Now, spotlight packs will have fixed card. Now, the fixed cards in the spotlight packs will be at the moment the pack is released based on the listed content sets. The other five cards will be determined at time the pack is open. Now, limited edition cards. These are not included in the potential fixed set of cards. So, cards like the Mike Scott limited edition card that we've had, um, any other limited edition cards we had, these will not show up in these packs. Now, pack pricing will vary depending on the particular content sets that are going to be available with the packs that are released. The first spotlight pack that we're going to have today will be at 6 15,000 perfect points. So, pretty cool stuff right there. Um, more odds and weights info for the math nerds out there will be detailed in a forum post that should be going live here sometime in the very near future. All right, folks. So, some pretty cool stuff going on with these spotlight packs right here. Something we're trying out. I, I feel like there's this going to be some pretty cool stuff right here. All right, folks. And a Discord post, one would hope. Yep, that is, um, that is what we are um, looking to do as well. All righty. So let's move on. Now, speak. Now we got some tournament news coming up for y'all today. That is right, everybody. We have a tournament refresh coming up and is going to be taking place starting Monday, June 5th. Now, there's a lot of information to go through on these tournament refresh information. I'm going to go ahead and take myself off the screen so you can take a look at some stuff. We've got some tournament environment changes to quite a few tournaments here, especially with the traditional tournaments. Now, in the traditional tournaments, the big ones, Sunday Open Adventure is now going to be known as the Sunday Main Event with the start time changed to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, this is going to be a pretty interesting tournament because we're going to be trying a few things with this particular one. So stay tuned for some more information on that. The Saturday Tournament Lab is now going to be a bronze floor low diamond ceiling tournament with a 1908 cap, a 1908 run environment with no designated hitter. The Wednesday Mishmash Tournament is now going to be an all-star and hardware heroes cards only tournament with a 1970 run environment. And there's several other tournament um, tournament run environment um, changes going on here as well. Some other ones. The daily bronze floor cap is going to be having a cap increase from 1875 to 1900. The daily bronze cap is going to go up from a 1375 cap to a 1425 cap as well. And the daily OTP era cap will go from a 1750 to a 1650 cap with the run environment being changed to a modern era. So a lot of a lot of modern era stuff going on. Um, Daily Early Gold's going to go to a 1999 era. Some Definitely some shifts in the different eras that are going to be coming up. Now, as I go to the next slide, I have a feeling the first three bullet points that are going to be on this next slide will be of interest 
to quite a significant subset of users. Ladies and gentlemen, look on the left side of your screen right now. Traditional tourneys in 32 team bronze quicks, silver quicks, and gold quicks are in. There's really not a whole lot else I need to say about this slide, folks. Not a whole lot else I need to say about this slide. Uh, some other tourneys that are coming in along with the 32 team quicks. We have Daily High Silver Floor Low Diamond Ceiling with a 21.99 cap. Modern Era Tournament with a designated hitter. The Daily Special Edition cap will come on in with an 18.75 cap. Modern Era with a designated hitter. The Daily Live cap will be coming in with an 18.25 cap with a designated hitter. And we're going to have a couple of, I believe, weekly tournaments coming in. The Tuesday Snapshots will be coming in with a Modern Era with a designated hitter. And the Thursday Defense to Home Run Era will be coming in to the traditional tournament lineup with a 1980 cap, a 1980 run environment with a designated hitter. Now, with that being said, there are a few traditional tourneys that are going to be phased out for a little bit with this tournament refresh. The 16-team bronze double elimination, the 8-team low diamond quick, the 8-team diamond quick, the daily boom to now cap, the daily defensive to now cap, and the daily dead ball to boom cap, the Tuesday bronze floor gold ceiling cap, and the Thursday low Iron Man will be eliminated for the time being. So some interesting tourneys coming in, coming on out. Now, in terms of the perfect draft environment, here's what we got coming up with the refresh. Perfect draft tournaments, the Monday motivation, and the Tuesday double perfect perfect draft tournaments will be increased from 128 teams to 256 teams. The Sunday avoiding yard work will be going from a basic perfect draft to a 1961 to live only card pool with a 1984 run environment and a designated hitter. The Can't Sleep Clown Will Eat Me Perfect Draft Tournament will be changed from an OOTP era format to everything before 1999. It will have a 1972 run environment and a designated hitter. Um, in terms of the rewards for those 32 team quick, uh, quick tournaments, I do not have that information um, at my disposal at this point. I do not have that information at this particular time. Um, for the perfect draft tournaments that are coming in, we have two 16 team quick standard perfect draft quick tournaments. We have a daily orderly perfect draft, a Tuesday orderly perfect draft. We're going to be trying out a couple different new perfect draft setups here as well. We're also going to have the Saturday night bronze to diamond and the daily bronze to diamond tournaments as well. Now, there are going to be some perfect draft tournaments that are coming out with two 64 team BO5 quick perfect drafts going out. The daily perfect draft three, daily perfect draft six, the Tuesday night and Saturday night perfect drafts being exchanged for these new perfect draft tournaments coming in. So we talked about now there's a couple different new perfect draft tournaments that are coming in the orderly perfect draft and the bronze to diamond perfect draft. So let's talk a little bit about these new perfect draft formats. Now the bronze to high the diamond draft is going to look a little something like this round two round. The first couple rounds are going to be picking one high diamond card each. Round three, you're going to be picking one low diamond card. Rounds four and five, you're going to pick a couple of high gold cards each. Round six, you're going to pick a couple of low gold cards. So we're kind of, you know, separating from lot from high diamond, low diamond, high gold, low gold, stuff like that going on here. Uh, round seven and eight, a couple of high silvers each. Round nine, a couple of low silvers. Round 10, you're going to be picking two high bronzes, but in round 11, there's going to be three high bronzes that are going to be picked. 
Round 12 and 13, we'll be picking three low bronzes in each round. Now for the orderly draft, it's kind of similar to the bronze to diamond draft, only we're adding in the perfect and iron levels here. So the orderly draft, round one, you're going to pick one perfect. Round two, you're going to pick one high diamond. Round three, you're going to pick one low diamond. Rounds four and five, you're going to be picking a couple of high golds each. Round six, you're going to be picking a couple of low golds. Round seven and eight, you're going to be picking a couple of high silvers each. Round nine, you're going to get a couple of low silvers. Uh, round 10 is going to be two high bronzes. Round 11 is going to be three low bronze tournament. Well, three low bronze cards. And then in rounds 12 and 13, you're going to be picking a high iron card for the round 12, picking three of those. And round 13, you're going to be picking from three low iron cards. So some so very interesting draft formats here for these new formats. It's, it's something we're, we're definitely trying out here a little bit. And, you know, we want to kind of shake up perfect drafts a little bit with this. Alrighty, folks. Alrighty, alrighty. So, let's move on. Speaking of tournaments. Speaking of tournaments. Ladies and gentlemen, Perfect Team Championship Series number two is coming up next Saturday. That is right. The second Perfect Team Championship Series will occur Saturday, June 10th beginning at noon Eastern time with finals coverage with yours truly on the out of the park development Twitch channel. Now the top 128 teams from the last five cumulative weeks in each of the 10 eligible formats will be participating in the perfect team championship series. That includes results from this week's tournaments. Players will be getting points based on how they finish in the perfect team championship series, similar to how that, um, how it was done in PTCS number one. And the top 64 teams overall from the first four PTCS periods will be going to the Perfect Team Master Series. So another chance to accrue some points for those of you who are competing for the Perfect Team Master Series. First place through 32nd place in each PTCS tournament will get a brand new PTCS exclusive card depending on how they finished. And we'll talk a little bit about those in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and talk about the formats for PTCS number two. Because we have 10 different tournaments, we're going to have a lot of, in, we're going to have some different formats for each one. So, unless specified, all of these formats will have a 1995 run environment with a designated hitter. We do have one tournament that won't have the, that format, so, so keep your ears and eyes open for this. So let's start off with talking about the format for the Daily Iron Qualifiers. And we will have a Historical Iron 1225 cap. Oh man, the famous the famous Iron 1225 cap coming into PTCS number two. That was one of my favorite tournaments. One of my favorite tournament formats back in the days when uh, the Friday Showdown was like a traditional tournament. That is pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff right there. In terms of the bronze format, the bronze, we have a bronze only 17-17 cap. So a bit of a higher cap than you're used to kind of with the with the bronze tournaments, but should but it's bronze only, so we'll see what kind of roster building we'll have with that. As for the sil daily silver qualifiers, they'll be competing in a silver only 1995 cap. So kind of a higher cap there for the uh, for the silvers here. For the daily gold qualifiers for PTCS number two, we are going to have a gold only 2233 cap right there. Is that 1717 a typo? It is not. So we have a gold only 2233 cap for the daily gold coming up. In terms of the daily diamond qualifiers, we will have a diamond only 2488 cap. So some very, very interesting, interesting cap numbers coming with these ones right here. 
And then for the open, we will have the daily open. We'll have an open 1750 cap for PTCS number two. Now the wild card format for Pete, the daily wild card format for this one um, is going to be different. It's going to be a different run environment and a different designated hitter designation for this one. The wild card will be a rebirth to golden years tournament with no designated hitter and a 1936 run environment. And that is pretty much a tribute to Lou Gehrig with the upcoming PTCS coming up. So kind of doing like the 1936 run environment kind of toward the end of Gehrig's career at this particular point. Alrighty, so with the weekly tournaments, the weekly tournaments, we will have a special edition open for those of you who have been competing in weekly tournaments there. And as for the perfect drafts, we will be introducing the bronze to diamond draft for the perfect draft daily PTCS number two. And then the PD weekly, we will be bringing in the orderly draft for the perfect draft weekly tournament with a designated hitter. All right. So some very interesting formats coming up for PTCS number two. Let's talk about the rewards for Perfect Team Championship Series number two. And we start out with the 17th through 32nd place prize for the tournament. And it will be 83 overall from the 1950 Detroit Tigers left fielder Hoot Evers. Hoot Evers, 79 Babip, 69 Power, 65 Avoid K, 86 Contact, 84 Gap Power, and 66 on the eye. Some pretty decent defense out there in left field. 73 range, 102 error, and 77 on the arm. Can play left field. He is qualified to learn in center and right field as well. He's a little bit better against righties in some categories than he is against lefties. A little bit more balanced against lefties than he is against righties, though. Um, against righties, he has 81 BABIP, 69 power, 63 avoid K, 87 contact, 86 gap power, and 65 on the eye. Against lefties, he's got 72 BABIP, 67 power, 69 avoid K, 81 contact, 77 gap power, and 67 on the eye. Speed stealing and base running kind of on the low end with this guy. 49 speed, 32 stealing, and 49 on the base running. Sack bunt, he's not too bad at it. 67 sack bunt and 60 on the bunt for hit. Now, this comes based on Hoot Evers' 1950 season, a career year for Hoot Evers. Hit 323, 408, 551 on the slash line with 21 homers, 103 RBI, and a 141 OPS+. Plus. Now, he was a 1950 All-Star, his second and final All-Star season at that. He led the American League in triples that year with 11 of them, but he was also leading the league in caught stealing. This guy, a little bit too aggressive for his own good on uh, stealing bases. Now, who Evers is still the only Major League Baseball player in history. He did it this year to hit for the cycle with two triples. He did that on September 7th, 1950. That is some solid stuff for Hootevers right there. This is a solid low gold card for the 17th through 32nd place prize in PTCS number two. All right, we go now to the 9th through 16th place prize in next Saturday's PTCS, and it comes to us from the 1938 Cleveland team, and we bring to you center fielder Earl Averill. Earl Averill. Look at the bat on this high gold card right here. 85 BABIP, 65 power, 68 avoid K, 91 contact, 90 gap power, and 101 on the eye overall. A little bit better against righties than he is against lefties. He's got 84 BABIP, 67 power, 75 avoid K, 93 contact, 92 gap power, and 104 on the eye against righties. Those are some good, those are some good ratings right there against righties. 
He can play center field. He can also play some right field as well. Uh, 79 range, 67 error, 78 outfield arm. So probably more of a right fielder kind of player than he is a center fielder, to be quite honest with you. Uh, 29 speed, 76 dealing, and 80 on the base running, 61 on the sack bunt, 65 on the bunt for hit. Now, Earl Averill's 1938 season, a very good one, kind of late in his career, though. Um, he hit 330, 429, 535 during the regular season for Cleveland with 14 homers, 93 RBI, and 142 on the OPS+. Plus. He was an all-star that year and finished 8th in the American League MVP voting. His 345 Babbitt during the year, the third highest mark in his career. And this was Earl Averill's final season where he had more than 10 triples, more than 100 hits, and more than 100 runs scored. I believe it was some injuries later on in his career that kind of diminished his effectiveness on the field for Cleveland, which this was his last good season, pretty much. So Earl Averill, the ninth through 16th place prize in PTCS number two. Let's move on to the fifth through eighth place prize in next Saturday's PTCS number two. And it comes to us, hey, 1938. Once again, we go a little bit east of Cleveland to Massachusetts and the Boston Red Sox. And we have... 1938, 94 overall, first baseman from the Red Sox, Jimmy Fox. Jimmy Fox, the fifth through eighth place prize in PTCS number two. 82 Babbitt, 128 power, 47 avoid K, 100 contact, 78 gap power, and 110 on the eye. Look at those ratings against lefties who buddy who buddy 89 babip 123 power 57 avoid k 109 contact 102 gap power and a whopping 124 on the eye holy cow that is a lot of blue on that v left and v right he's not bad either in fact he actually has a little bit more power against righties than he does against lefties he has 130 power still 80 babbitt but a little bit lower on the avoid k at 43 97 contact 70 gap and 106 on the eye against righties he can play first base he does have positional eligibility at third base already and is qualified to learn a little bit more at that as well 70 range, 37 error, 50 arm, and 47 on the turn double play. I mean, you could play this guy at third. Probably don't want to, but he's at least got a little bit of range over there, at the very least. 28 speed, 36 stealing, and 47 on the base running as well. Uh, but don't but don't don't have this guy bunt. Just just don't. Like, why would you have Jimmy Fox bunt when he can hit you a few dingers? Like, come on. Five sack bunt, two bunt for hit. This is a big flashing sign that says, do not have this guy bunt. Like, at all. Not even close. I'm just giving y'all advice here. From a very mediocre, perfect team player to the experts that are out there. Don't have this guy bunt. And and, and don't have this guy bunt like play third either <laughs> 1938 season for jimmy fox is a really good one 349 462 and 704 on the slash line that is a 704 slugging percentage y'all this dude hit 50 homers 50 5 0 50 crazy numbers right there 175 RBI, a 183 OPS plus. He was the 1938 American League MVP. He was an all-star, led the American League in batting average in OPS plus, and he led MLB in batting in um in walks as well. Um, let's see. He had 119 walks during that year, which is just insane to think about. 
Now that 50 homer mark was a Boston Red Sox franchise record up until David Ortiz's 54 homers in the 2006 season. So those are some insane numbers there for Jimmy Fox, and he is the 5th through 8th place in Perfect Team Championship Series number 2. Now, let's start talking about 3rd and 4th place, and we go back into the 1800s for this next one. Specifically, the 1899 Phillies, and we bring to you 98 overall second baseman from the Phillies, Nap Lajway. Nap Lajway, 94 BABIP, 67 power, 86 avoid K, 105 contact, 89 gap power, and 40 on the eye. There's some insane splits here against lefties here. 98 BABIP, 72 power, 90 avoid K, 112 contact, 93 gap power, and 42 on the eye. Decent defensively over at second base, can play first base, and can also play a little bit of center field. 72 range, 70 error, 54 arm, and 100 on the turn, double play on the infield, and in the outfield, 75 range, 63 error, and 60 on the arm. 71 speed, 73 stealing, 75 on the base running. Now, Nap Lodgeway, good contact hitter during his career hit 378 419 554 during the regular season for philadelphia six homers 70 rbi and a 169 ops plus he only played 77 games though this year due to an injury he sustained but despite that this was the third highest war number in his philadelphia career before he jumped over to the american league with cleveland he had 3.8 war during this year and his 375 BABIP the highest in his career in the National League. So this is pretty good stuff. He's mainly playing at second base. He's got some positional eligibility already in center field. You can also train him up to play a little bit of first base. This guy, you know, pretty good contact. He's going to get the bat on the ball. He's not going to walk a lot. I mean, you know, his his gap between average and on-base percentage was only about .041, so didn't really take a whole lot of walks. But, you know, he's not going to strike out a whole lot. He's going to make contact with the ball. Babbitt rating's pretty good, too. So there you go. Nap Lodgeway, 98 overall from the 1899 Philadelphia Phillies, is in. Perfect team, 24. All righty. Now, let's talk about the second place prize in this upcoming PTCS2. And we will be going behind the plate for our second place prize. And we will be bringing to you catcher 100 overall from the 1967 St. Louis Cardinals, Tim McCarver. Tim McCarver, 74 BABIP, 67 power, 107 of OEK, 96 contact, 79 gap, and 69 on the eye. But look at that catcher defense over on the left side of the screen. That is 95 catcher ability and 93 on the arm. But man, oh man, look at those splits against lefties, folks. 74 BABIP, 72 power, 111 on the avoid K, 101 contact, 83 gap power, and 74 on the eye. That's some good contact hitting right there for Tim McCarver. Speed stealing and base running, not exactly there. 33 speed, 32 stealing, but 90 on the base running. Um, he can learn. He is a catcher, but he can also learn a little bit of first base. However, if we take a look at those infield ratings, ten range, ten error, two arm, two turn, double play. I 
wouldn't put Tim McCarver at first base. I mean, you certainly could. I mean, I'd love to see people try, but like, it's not recommended. <laughs> Oh, God, Tim McCarver. But you know what? This 1967 season for Tim McCarver, this was the best in his career. 295, 369, 452 with 14 homers, 69 RBI, and a 136 OPS+. plus. Best hitting season of his career. He was an all-star that year, finished second in National League MVP. He had career highs in home runs, RBI, and wins above replacement, mostly buoyed by his defensive stats. This guy threw out 55% of base dealers during the 1967 season. That's above like the 40%-ish league average that was that year in 67. So this guy, you know, had a freaking cannon for an arm behind the plate. So there you go. Tim McCarver, your second place prize in PTCS number two. Now, the prize, the grand prize, the champion prize for Perfect Team Championship Series number two comes to us from 1995. And I believe, and this is this is the reason why we had a lot of 1995 run environments with our PTCS format. Because we can go out west for our PTCS two champion prize, specifically the Pacific Northwest, and we go to the pitcher's mound. For the 1995 Seattle Mariners. And we bring to you 100 overall Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson, 156 on the stuff, 116 movement, 112 homer rating, 78 pitcher Babip, and 81 on the control. Look at those splits against lefties, though. That is 175 stuff, a 125 movement rating, 122 homer rating, 88 pitcher Babbitt, and 84 on the control. Against righties, what is, hey, against righties, still very, very excellent. 149 stuff, 113 movement, 109 homer rating, 75 pitcher Babbitt, and 80 on the control. 95 stamina, 77 on the hold runners. Fly ball guy, 96 to 98 on the velocity. Fastball, slider, changeup combo with Randy Johnson. This 1995 season for Randy Johnson, very excellent. 18 and 2 record in the regular season with a 248 ERA, 12.3 Ks per nine. 2.7 walks per nine. So his walk rate, you know, actually wasn't that bad during the regular season for Mr. Randy Johnson. He led MLB in strikeouts, strikeouts per nine, even fielding independent pitching at a 208. He had a 0.5 homer per nine rating. That was a career low for the big unit. And he was the first starting pitcher in history to strike out more than a third of all the batters he faced. That is pretty darn significant. And he was actually pretty good in the postseason as well. Uh, he pitched a three-hitter in the AL West's one-game playoff to send them to the playoffs, striking out 12 California Angels. Um, he was started in Game 3 of the ALDS against the Yankees that year, with 10 strikeouts in seven innings. And when the series went the full five games, the Mariners having come back from that 2-0 deficit to force that game five at the Kingdom, Johnson made a dramatic relief appearance in the series final, game five on only one day's, of, one day's rest. Entered a 4-4 game, pitched the 9th, the 10th, and the 11th 
allowing just one run, striking out six, and holding on for the series ending win for the Mariners. So some fun stuff right there. Randy Johnson, the PTCS2 champion prize. Oh man, some fun stuff here, folks. Fun stuff here. And well, so we've talked a little bit about these stats here. And, and you know how I was the first, how I knew that Randy Johnson was the first starting pitcher to strike out more than a third of all the batters he faced as a starting pitcher? It was Wikipedia. But also, I verified it with Stathead Baseball, powered by Baseball Reference. And you can too. You can use code 23. OOTP25 for $25 off an annual baseball or all sport subscription. And let me tell you folks, there there were a, there were some very fun facts that I learned throughout this whole thing like like the who evers, the cycle thing with two triples, he's the only player to do that. And you know how I found that out? Also Wikipedia, but also verified with Stathead as well. Man, that twenty-five dollars off, you know, that that's that's good for a that's good for a one-person fancy meal at a restaurant, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, you can use code twenty-three OTP twenty-five to get a twenty-five dollar um, discount. And you know, it's not just for baseball. You know, I keep we we keep using this for baseball and stuff like that. But but you can use it for football. You can use it for hockey. You can use it for basketball. I know the NBA finals are coming up. Here in a little bit, you got the uh, got the heat. You got the nuggets. All you need is a microwave. <laughs> oh my goodness! But you know what? This is this is a great discount, if you ask me. I use it all the time for when I do these slides, and you can too. Offer expires on July first, twenty twenty three. So this is the last month to get in on this. If you have not gotten in on this, what are you waiting for? You got a month left to take advantage of this. Damn good discount, folks. $25 off. Use code 23OTP25 at checkout for Stathead Baseball, powered by Baseball Reference. Alrighty, folks. Well, let's go ahead and get to the meat and potatoes of today. We've already had a lot of meat and potatoes today, all right? We had the PTCS stuff. We had spotlight packs. We have, we have 32 team quicks coming back. We have a lot of stuff going on, but you know what? All of y'all have been waiting for this. Ladies and gentlemen, our Lou Gehrig collection. Yes, we are celebrating a baseball legend, an American hero, with cards based on several years from Lou Gehrig's career. And let me tell you, folks, you know... Lou Gehrig, you know, one of the one of the greatest first basemen really of all time, if you really think about it. He was a key cog in those 20s and 30s Yankees teams that won all those World Series. And, you know, very unfortunate way to kind of end his career when he was diagnosed with ALS. If I if I may take a few moments before we get into this, I I'd like to at least you know, honor Mr. Gehrig. And, and hopefully I'm not, like, violating a copyright or rights issues here, but I'm on the National Baseball Hall of Fame uh, website right now, and I'd, and I'd love, to, I'd like to read, you know, the, the speech that Lou Gehrig gave um, in front of all those fans, 61,000 fans between games of a doubleheader on July 4th, 1939. Oh, man. So, here we go. As said by Lou Gehrig, his luckiest man speech. For the past two weeks, you have been reading about a bad break. Yet today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. I have been in ballparks for 17 years and have never received anything but kindness and encouragement from you fans. When you look around, wouldn't you consider it a privilege to associate yourself with such a fine-looking men as they're standing in uniform in this ballpark today? Sure, I'm lucky. 
Who wouldn't consider it an honor to have known Jacob Ruppert? Also the builder of baseball's greatest empire, Ed Barrow. To have spent six years with that wonderful little fellow, Miller Huggins. Then to have spent the next nine years with that outstanding leader, that smart student of psychology, the best manager in baseball today, Joe McCarthy. Sure, I'm lucky. When the New York Giants, a team you would give your right arm to beat, and vice versa, sends you a gift, that's something. When everybody down to the groundskeepers and those boys in white coats remember you with trophies, that's something. When you have a wonderful mother-in-law who takes sides with you and squabbles with her own daughter, that's something. When you have a father and a mother who work all their lives so you can have an education and build your body, it's a blessing. When you have a wife who has been a tower of strength and shown more courage than you dreamed existed, that's the finest I know. So I close in saying that I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Thank you. Let's go ahead and get into some cards, shall we? Now, before we get into the cards, let's talk about the setup for the Lou Gehrig stuff we got going on. Now, first things first, I do want to mention that there will be, that we will be doing a charity stream on the Out of the Park Developments Twitch channel later this month, supporting the ALS Association. That's going to be a fun time, and we are going to be working with, an, well, okay, we're not going to, okay, so there will be an ALS charity stream later this month. We're actually going to be working with a new partner on it, and we will be announcing that very, very soon. So stay tuned for more information on that as well. Now, with the Lou Gehrig collection info, it's going to be a little bit different than we did with the Jackie Robinson collection. Today, we're going to be releasing Iron Through Perfect cards, like usual, based on several years on Lou Gehrig's career. However, this time, the Iron, Bronze, and Silver cards will be in their own missions, while the Gold, Diamond, and Perfect cards will be found in packs. And there are going to be 58 lower-tier packable cards coming today as well, which will also be in the Gehrig missions. So trying something a little bit different with this particular partnership here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the cards that we will have in the Lou Gehrig collection today. And we're gonna be starting down in the iron levels right here. And we start off with 58 overall from the 1925 New York Yankees Lou Gehrig. Obviously, it's Lou Gehrig. They're all going to be Lou Gehrig. 59 Babip, 78 Power, 40 Avoid K, 62 Contact, 76 Gap Power, and 61 on the eye. 62 infield range, 52 infield error, 55 on the infield arm, and 49 on the turn double play in the infield. Now, he's a lot better against righties than he is against lefties as a left-handed hitter. 67 Babbitt, 77 Power, 45 Avoid K, 71 Contact, 76 Gap, and 62 I against righties. And against lefties, only 33 Babbitt, but 84 Power. So you're going to get a little more power against lefties with this guy than you will against righties. 22 Avoid K as well, 40 Contact, 78 Gap, and 57 on the I. 32 speed, 47 stealing, and 47 on the base running. Decent sack bunt as well, 56 on the sack bunt, and 50 on the bunt for hit. Now, Lou Gehrig, this is his first full season of his career. He also played a little bit of left and right field as well. Um, however, didn't play it enough to have it on his card here. Now, he took over the starting job from Wally Pipp this year on June 1st and absolutely ran with it. Uh, and in that first game that he took over the job from Wally Pipp, he went three for five against the Washington Senators in his first game as the starting first baseman. 
Poor Wally Pip. You know, there's there's been a lot said about why Lou Gehrig took over for Wally Pip. Some say that it was due to Pip's poor performance. Pip himself has claimed that it was because he had a headache, got hit by a line drive. There have been historical accounts that said that actually didn't happen like that. It was actually later in the year that that particular incident happened. It's a whole thing, but, you know, Lou Gehrig took over at first base this year, and he just absolutely ran with it from here on in. So there you go. Lou Gehrig from the 1925 New York Yankees. And, and peep the card art on this one. We got card art for all of the Lou Gehrig cards that you are going to see here today. And we got a pretty good one from his Columbia days back in college. This guy was a young guy coming out of college. Look at, look at this guy right here. Pretty cool stuff right here. 1925 Lou Gehrig is the iron card in our Lou Gehrig collection and will be in a mission. Now let's move on to the bronze Lou Gehrig. And this will be coming from, well, this is going to be a 65 overall card from the 1938 season for Lou Gehrig. And, and let me just tell you, the, this, this it was hard to find some lower tier seasons for Lou Gehrig because all of his seasons were very much incredible. Like, it's hard to find an iron, iron year for Lou Gehrig. It's hard to find a bronze year for Lou Gehrig. So we go with his 1938 season here. Uh, 62 Babbitt, 84 Power, 45 Aboy K, 70 Contact, 71 Gap, and 99 on the eye. Definitely a lot better this year against righties than he was against lefties. 61 Babbitt, 92 Power, 47 Aboy K, 74 Contact, 73 Gap, and 109 Eye against righties. While against lefties, it's a little bit on the uh, side here. 64 Babbitt, 61 Power, 39 Aboy K, 58 contact, 64 gap, and 69 on the eye. Now, you got to keep in mind the context of this 1938 season for Lou Gehrig. This was pretty much the final full season of his career, and this was when, you know, he was starting to decline physically, unfortunately. Um, hit 295, 410, 523 with 29 homers, 114 RBI, and a 132 OPS plus final full season. And this was the first year since that 1925 season where he hit under 300 with the last home run of his career hit on September 27th. Now, this guy was in physical decline at this point, unfortunately, and it was visible to a lot of people. And it really got magnified that next spring training in 1939 when he could barely get the ball out of the infield practically. Didn't even hit a home run in spring training. It was it was kind of, you know, sad to see him decline like this. But, you know, he still had a productive season in the 1938 season. So pretty cool stuff. And honestly, look at this statistically here. This is a pretty good V-right first baseman maybe for the bronze levels. So could be a fun little option there for y'all so here you go Lou Gehrig from the 1938 New York Yankees is the bronze card in our Lou Gehrig collection and still damn good card art right there all right let's move on to the silver card let's move on to the silver card and we go back to the 20s for this next one and we go to a time where he was a little bit more established in the New York lineup here. We go to a 74 overall 1929 season for Lou Gehrig. 56 Babbitt, 96 power, 40 avoid K, 68 contact, 74 gap, and 115 on the eye. And some good power and eye numbers against both righties and lefties. Against righties, he's got 59 BABIP, 94 power, 42 avoid K, 70 contact, 78 gap, and 119 on the eye. Against lefties, 48 BABIP, 102 power, so you're getting a little bit more power against lefties here. 
33 avoid K, 59 contact, 63 gap power, and 103 on the eye. Still some decent defense over at first base. 54 range, 45 error, 47 arm, and 42 on the turn double play. 23 speed, 33 stealing, and 56 on the base running. 67 sack bunt, and 45 on the bunt for hit. Now, 1929, again, another very good season for Lou Gehrig. 300, 431, 584 on the slash line with 35 homers, 125 RBI, and a 166 OPS plus for the Iron Horse. Third lowest average, though, in his career in a full season. So, honestly, you could say 1929 was a little bit of a slump season for this guy in his prime. But, you know, this was still a lot of players' good productive season, statistically. And this was only his second season of his career where he had 30 or more homers. You're, you're going to see a lot more homers with these other cards coming up. I'll just say that much. And he also led the American League in intentional walks, despite the kind of down season. He had nine intentional walks during that regular season. So there you go. 74 overall Lou Gehrig from the 1929 New York Yankees. Let's move on to the Lou Gehrig cards that you are going to be finding in packs. And we start off with the gold card. Start off with the gold card. And we go to an 86 overall card from the 1932 season for Mr. Gehrig. 79 Babip, 96 power, 66 avoid K, 97 contact, 78 gap power, and 100 on the eye. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now we're starting to get some more green. We're starting to get some more blue into these cards right here. Against lefties, he has 76 Babip, 106 power, 52 avoid K, 93 contact, 91 gap power, and 94 on the eye. And against righties, it's a little bit more balanced. 80 Babip, 92 power, 71 avoid K, 98 contact, 74 gap power, and 102 on the eye. So very solid gold first base card right here. Now, defensively, it's a little bit lesser than some of the other cards that we've seen for Garrick so far. 51 range, 34 error, 40 arm, 35 on the turn double play. 49 speed, 37 stealing, and 53 on the base running for this 1932 Gehrig card. Hit 349, 451, 621 during the regular season with 34 homers, 151 RBI, and a 181 OPS+. Plus. A solid year for Lou Gehrig. Then again, when didn't he have a solid year? Uh, finished second in the American League MVP voting to one Jimmy Fox, who we saw earlier tonight. This was his third straight year of 150 or more RBI. He had like, what, 170 or so plus the other two seasons? Let me let me just go ahead and double check here. Yeah, 1932 season, 151. That's paltry compared to his last couple of seasons where he had 185 RBI and 173 RBI. That's just absolutely insane numbers, y'all. That is absolutely insane numbers. Lou Gehrig, um, in, during this 1932 season, pulled off a pretty, you know, incredible feat. Hit four home runs on June 3rd, 1932 against the Athletics and narrowly missed having five homers. He had a home run that was robbed from him. So, dude almost had a five homer game. Which would have been just absolutely incredible. So there you go. Lou Gehrig from the 1932 Yankees is the gold card in our Gehrig collection. Now we move on to the diamond card. We move on to the diamond card. And you know, with the, with the perfect card being a peak card, you know, there is only one season we could have chosen for this diamond card. And that would have been 
his 1927 season. 98 overall, Lou Gehrig. Oh my goodness, look at this one right here. 104 Babbitt, 115 power, 45 avoid K, 111 contact, 115 gap, and 110 on the eye. This dude is using two bats in this photo. Two bats. Holy cow. Hoo-wee. And look at the splits against right. Honestly, both of these splits are pretty darn good. All right. Against righties, 106 BABIP, 117 power, 47 avoid K, 114 contacts, 119 gap, and 112 on the eye. And against lefties, 98 BABIP, 111 power, 41 avoid K, 102 contact, 103 gap, 102 on the eye. There's a lot of hundreds. There's a lot of hundreds on this, on this card right here. Defensively, not great. 44 range, 43 error, 41 arm, 35 on the turn double play, at least compared to the other Garrett cards that we have seen today. 21 speed, 49 stealing, 80 on the base running. Pretty good sack bunt, though. Pretty good sack bunt here. 90s on the sack bunt, 76 on the bunt for hit. I mean, why would you be sack bunting if you were Garrett? Look, this, this was the 1920s. There was... There was a lot of um, unselfish baseball going on during that time. Uh, 1927 year for Lou Gehrig during the heyday of the Murderers Row Yankees. 373, 474, 765 on the slash line. <laughs> this is These are video game numbers, y'all. This, this, these are insane numbers. My God. 47 homers, 173 RBI, and a 220 OPS+. Plus. He was the 1927 American League MVP. And if I recall correctly, if I recall correctly, this was the first... No, this was not the first ever MVP vote, but this was the first of two MVP awards he would get in his career, um, he would earn one in the 1936 season for the Yankees. He led the American League in RBI and doubles that year, had 52 of them. 117 extra base hits during this season, second all time. And his 447 total bases, third all time. He finished actually second on the 1927 Yankees in wins above replacement with 11.8 of them. Babe Ruth, teammate, had 12.6 war. So Lou Gehrig may not have even been the best player on his own team at that point, but he was still damn good. So there you go. 98 overall, Lou Gehrig from 1927. All right, folks. If you thought this card looked good if you thought this diamond lou gehrig card looked good <laughs> look at this look at this 103 babbit 135 power, 71 avoid K, 128 contact, 120 gap power, 121 on the eye. I mean, just bask in this thing. Just bask in this thing. <laughs> this is absolutely in. Same. And look at these splits. These these are some good splits right here. 109 Babip against righties. 136 power. 73 avoid K. 134 contact. 123 gap power. 123 on the eye. And against lefties. 
85 Babbitt, 131 Power, 66 Avoid K, 112 Contact, 111 Gap Power, 114 on the eye. Ah! <laughs> My eyes are going crazy for all this blue right here. Goodness gracious. Oh my goodness. Defensively, you know, he's actually not bad over at first base. 69 range, 58 error, 67 arm, and 57 on the turn double play. 57 speed, 66 stealing, 74 on the base running. He can bunt a little bit too. 78 sack bunt, 61 on the bunt for hit. My, oh my. Lou Gehrig, I mean, what more can be said about this guy's career? What more can be said about this guy's career? 1923, all the way to a few games in 1939. Hit 340, 447, 632 in his career. 493 career homers. 1,995 RBI. He was a seven-time All-Star, a two-time AL MVP. We just saw one of them. He led Major League Baseball in homers three times during his career, led the American League in RBI five times in his career, and he won the Triple Crown in the 1934 season, 363 with 49 homers and 166 RBI. My goodness. Lou, the Iron Horse Gehrig. 100 overall, peak card, will be in packs the perfect the gold the diamond are in packs iron bronze silver going to be in missions that will be coming up at the end of the noon stream today but 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 we mentioned that there's going to be some lower tier cards coming up we have 58 lower tier cards that are going to be in packs alongside those Gehrigs today. Let's go ahead and get me off screen here for a little bit. Now, these are just a sampling of the cards that you will be seeing in packs as well today. Silver and below cards all the way down into the iron ranks here. We're going to have guys like Bill Swift, Frank Demery, Ken Williams, Earl Combs, Frankie Crisetti. Boom Boom Beck, Bernie Freiburg, Gabby Hartnett, Joe Genowich. We got Tommy Henrik. We got Joe Judge, Dolph Luke, Heine Muller, Earl Whitehill, Huey Kreitz in here. Pepper Martin from St. Louis. Got Muddy Rule. You got Don Brennan from those 33 Yankees. Got Leo DeRocher, Wes Farrell, Hal Schumacher, Butch Henline, Cookie Lavagetto, Baby Doll Jacobson, Ted Lyons, Maurice Archdeacon. Sam Jones, Hank Johnson, Monty Pearson, Charlie Gilbert. We even got Sugar Kane and a low 40 overall, Lefty Grove. Ooh, some fun, fun, fun cards coming up today. And ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to announce that the cards are live right now. Have fun finding one of those three Gehrigs that are in packs. Have fun finding some of these cards as well. The missions are going to be coming up in a little bit. We're still waiting on those to be set and ready to go. So there you go. There is our Lou Gehrig collection. All the way from iron to perfect. With some damn good photos. You know, gotta, gotta give a shout out to my boy Daniel. Gotta give a shout out to my boy Daniel for the wonderful work that he did on those cards. All right, folks, let's talk about the weekly leaderboard champions for week eight. Last week from May 22nd through the 28th, Daily Iron champion last week was M the Bow and the Madison Mashers scoring 192 points last week. My goodness gracious. Daily Bronze winner was Mandy T and the Madison Moundsman with 91 points last week. Daily Silver Tournament, Daily Silver Leaderboard Champion last week was Robert Cat and the Denver Highlanders for the third straight week with 122 points this week. 
Daily Gold last week was won by Phony and the Staten Island Wild Turkeys with 121 points last week. The Daily Diamond, once again, I'm going to be sounding like a broken record for the eighth straight week. It was Jeff LTN and the Value City Viffers, this time with probably the highest point total he has had with 203 points. Man, oh man, there it looks like there's nobody that's going to stop him at this point from running the table in Daily Diamond. Unless someone can get in and maybe do a couple of upsets. Who knows? Who knows? Daily Open. Leaderboard champion last week was KJ22 in the Kaunas Litwanica Green with 112 points last week. The Daily Wild Card. Last week, the champions there were the Brooklyn Cyclones and Bonkers25 with 123 points. Weekly Tournament Leaderboard champion last week was Isidafo. And the Florence Baycats with 157 points. In the perfect draft realm, you have Jim Bowden 1 and the Strong Batty Attires with 113 points. In the perfect draft weekly tournaments last week, it was STLMO 282 and the Southside Vetoes finishing in first with 65 points. Whoo, Nelly! Whoo, Nelly, what a day! What a day, y'all! Yeah, strong badia. Strong dog! Um, they, they're, they're, they've been pretty much uh, burning eight in the countryside there a little bit last week. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of This Week in Perfect Team, episode number 205, the Lou Gehrig Collection. We had some fun times today looking at some PTCS2 cards, looking at the Gehrig cards, looking at some of the cool stuff that's going to be coming up today as well guys thank you so much for tuning in i will see you back here on friday night for another installment of the friday showdown take care y'all dishnet 34 rob tomlinson signing out have a fantastic rest of your day everybody